was rereading this book, Psycho Cybernetics. When was it written? I think it was like the 70s. Huh, that's weird, it doesn't say. 1960, my OCD kicked in. This is one book that everyone just essentially has rewritten. I'm not saying plagiarized, I'm saying they got inspired by. We're talking Joe Dispenza, Tony Robbins, yeah, names you would know that are, you know, hip in this modern self-development spiritual space. So what did Maxwell Maltz, who's not as well known, you could say, know that makes him so popular? He was a plastic surgeon, okay? So he'd give people facelifts. This make me look 20 years younger. Now when people get facelifts, why do they typically do that? It's to change their self image, how they feel about themselves from the outside going in. But he realized that it didn't make people change how they felt on the inside. A lot of times. There was reasons why people, even if their external environment changed, they wouldn't internally have a shift. In fact, there was three major reasons that I took away from kind of rereading this book and looking at my notes that I wanted to share with you here. These are the three most important things that are gonna make an identity shifting, experiencing that, impossible. All change is an identity shift. All lasting change is. Think about it, it's someone who loses 100 pounds of weight. They don't say, oh my God, I'm so glad I did that bicep workout and that chest workout really paid off. Notice what they all say when they look at old photos of themselves. Holy cow, I am no longer that person. That's not even me anymore. Who is that? Those are the kind of things that you'll hear them say because that's an identity shift. That's why they kept it off. On a personal note, I had a terrible addiction a nicotine addiction to vaping. When it came out in like 2018, 19, was stressed out of my mind. I was on like world tours and did the US like two or three times. Picked up some bad habits, what I'm trying to say, I got addicted to Juul. And I freaked myself out one day looking at all these research with people's like lungs exploding and you know, getting all wet and developing pneumonia at like 24. I was like, I am no longer a vapor. Are vapors smokers? I'm no longer a smoker. The decision was easy. It's getting yourself to make that decision that's hard, but it was lasting. I've never vaped since. I've had people, you know, I'm on the golf course and people vape. Oh, Clark, you want to, hey, hey, try some of this. You, you want to hit this? I'm like, no, I don't smoke. It's not even a decision for me. It's not even like, oh man, I wish I could vape. Like, I want to do that. Because a real decision is one you don't go back on. It's an identity shift. The point is this, whatever you identify with, you're going to remain consistent with that identity to back it up. Millionaires, people who make a ton of money, they remain consistent with that identity. The action step from this point for you, what is that 2.0 version of yourself? Maybe don't focus on where do you wanna go, but who you need to become. Just like I didn't really focus on where I wanted to go, like, okay, I wanna be a millionaire, I wanna have 100,000 or a million YouTube subscribers, sure, but anyone wants that, that's easy. I focused on who do I need to be to make that happen? Well, I needed to get good talking on camera, even though I wasn't. Needed to learn how to work the thing, needed to learn long nights and editing and putting in the work, getting really good at you know reading these books and conveying ideas. That's who you need to become. And then the thing follows. I call this the 2.0 version of you. Who is that person? Make a list of all the things and traits that they do. That's who you need to become. That's what we do in the first two weeks of my Metamorphic program is we spend all our time here because I know that can be a little hard. Um, and people have said that's the coolest part. You literally make a manifesto piece. Second biggest thing that's gonna block shifting, identity shifting for you, anything that you wanna manifest in your life, is thinking it's going to take so much time to change. One of the best habits that I got addicted to was early on in my 20s, I got addicted to making decisions really fast, like lightning fast decisions. I realized that the job of an entrepreneur is literally just to solve problems. That's why you have a job as an entrepreneur is because people have problems. Problems are good. Those are what you get paid to solve for others. And so one of the problems I had for myself is that it would take so much energy and thinking just to make decisions. Neuroscience can actually show that there's decision-making fatigue. That's actually a thing. The more decisions that you have to make, the less good your decisions are. So I just got really good at making fast decisions. You know, sit down in a restaurant, I'd get the menu and I'd make it a point to like pick out something before the waiter even brought the water and try to order as soon as possible. I don't know why, it just felt good. Someone mentions a book in a conversation or I hear it on a YouTube video, boom, Amazon, one card, one swipe, order. For things on that scale, obviously if you're hiring someone, don't just hire the first person Person you interview. What's my point with this? You're gonna prove to yourself by doing that that making decisions actually happen really fast. And they don't have to be this big mental gymnastics of, oh, it's gonna take so much time, it's gonna take so much effort and work. That's the thing that holds people back in life. 
you know, I call this one touching. Again, this comes from my metamorphic program. Someone emails you, you have a couple options. You, you see it and you can respond right then and there. Or what most people do is they see the email, they think about how they're gonna respond instantly. Maybe they open it, then they mark it as read or unread so they can come back to it and respond later. All of a sudden that one task of replying to an email that takes 30 seconds to a minute has just gone from one time, two times, three times, you probably put it on a to-do list, you come back to it. You've essentially replied to that email four different times in your head. You've exhausted those decision-making muscles. And no wonder you think that making changes or shifts or getting by is so draining or it's gonna take so much energy and work. My point, it's not making the decision that's actually hard. It's thinking that it's hard that makes it hard. The decision's easy can happen like that. You can sit down, choose what you want, and just go with your gut. Boom, decision made. You saved yourself 30 minutes of just like going back and forth and thinking and stressing. 99% of the time, I believe you know what to do. You do. You just need to make a decision. You need to draw a line in the sand of who you are now and who you want to be. And you have to look at that dream character that you created and say, this is who I'm going to be. This is who I am actually at my core. Here's my 1.0 and here's the decisions that I'm gonna cut off and remove. Just like for me, when I had the decision that I was gonna move down to Arizona, I was gonna remove myself from my environment that I'd, I'd grown up in you know, Seattle where I was for like 25, 28 years or something like that. Born, raised, went to college there, you know, elementary school, everything. Had all these memories there. I made the decision that I was gonna be this 2.0 version of Clark that I knew I was capable of. And I just, for some reason, there were some things that I really wanted to shift around, you know, my business and relationships and new life. I made the decision that I couldn't do that in Seattle. It was holding me back, the physical environment. So I made a decision to change and move down here to Scottsdale, Arizona, where I am now. Lo and behold, everything started to shift. It was that decision that I made. Most people, when you hear moving across the country, what do you think? You think, oh, that's gonna, you gotta really plan that. You know, you gotta, you gotta really like get the moving truck and you gotta make sure you get the best unit, the best deal. You gotta know how, you should probably do it. And look, I know people who have been thinking about moving for six months, eight months, a year, two years, three years even. I'd really love to go to Hawaii, right? Or oh, man, I'd love to go to the East Coast or down South and they wanna move, they wanna escape but they're just thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and they don't realize that the decision is easy. If they've made it, if they truly wanna go, all you have to do, you already know how to do it. Hire a mover, call the U-Haul, put a, put a, you know, make terms with the lease agreement. It can happen really fast. You could move this week if you wanted to. There's not as many barriers as you think. The last thing and probably the most important one is actually giving yourself the permission to shift. Remember how I said that one of the strongest needs is the need to remain consistent with your identity, right? That can work for you. The example is like a gym rat, goes to the gym, goes to, you know, eats clean. It's just a lifestyle for them. But here's the thing, it can also work against you. So many people think that they're bound to their past. It's like going to a high school reunion. I've never been for this reason. People wanna put you in a box of how you were as a kid or how you were at that time. And sometimes when you start to shift or change, people wanna drag you down, bring you back to that level. You can do that to yourself. Example, I wanna be in a relationship, the 2.0 me would be X, Y, and Z in relationships, but in the past it was A, B, C, and totally not like that. I would start that business, but you know, I tried that business in the past, it didn't work, so I'm, it's probably just gonna be the same thing. This is the thing I wanna leave you with. I think we grow up looking for permission from you know friends and family and bosses and coworkers and teachers, and we're just kinda of sitting here like waiting for permission to like, is it okay for me to act that way or be that person or do that thing or believe that thought or you know go for it the permission's never going to come you have to give yourself the permission you don't need anyone's permission start that business become that 2.0 version of you so if you want some help with this apply down below for our 2.0 coaching metamorphic program it's exclusive private little group with myself i, I coach and work with every single person um, you know exclusively there so if you want some help creating that 2.0 version of you removing anything that's gonna block you from getting there and shifting into it all within six weeks. 
reply down below. Happy to speak with you more and see if it's a good fit. Till next time, stop settling, start living. See ya.